Recently, as most people following the space world already know, there has been a lot of tension between SpaceX and NASA over the Starship Moon Lander program. Musk has even been calling out NASA officials publicly. NASA, on the other hand, keeps repeating that Starship is developing too slowly and that they are running out of time for the Artemis mission. Because of that, NASA has already started to take part of the contract away from SpaceX and open it up to other companies like Blue Origin. But recently, there have been some new ideas about Starship that might finally solve this whole conflict between SpaceX and NASA. If these concepts work, they could keep the Moon program on track and give Starship a much smoother path forward. And in today's video, we are going to take a look at these ideas and what they mean for the future of lunar missions. Before we dive any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates. You see, NASA's biggest concern with Starship is not about its power or its landing capability. SpaceX has already proven they can lift this giant rocket into space. They have even shown that they can catch the Super Heavy booster with the Mechazilla arms, which is something nobody would have believed possible just a few years ago. On the launch and landing side, SpaceX keeps proving themselves again and again. The real challenge is something completely different. What worries NASA the most is Starship's need for orbital refueling. This is not a simple task. For the Moon mission, a single Starship is not enough. It must be refueled in Earth orbit before it can head toward the lunar surface. And this refueling process is extremely complex. It requires multiple Starship tankers to launch one after another, sometimes 10 or more flights, all within a short time frame. Each tanker must reach the same orbit, dock with the lunar lander version of Starship, transfer huge amounts of cryogenic fuel, and then return or be disposed of. The problem is that none of this has ever been done in space before, at least not on this scale. Transferring cold methane and liquid oxygen between two massive spacecraft while both are floating in microgravity is one of the hardest engineering challenges SpaceX will ever attempt. The fuel must stay at the right temperature, the vehicles must stay aligned perfectly, and the entire process has to be repeated over and over without failures. This is why NASA is worried. They are nervous about the timing. The Artemis schedule is already extremely tight, and orbital refueling adds a huge amount of risk and uncertainty. But there is another solution that could solve all of this. And interestingly, it comes from an idea NASA once had decades ago, long before Starship even existed. This idea was originally dropped because the technology simply was not ready at the time. But today, with Starship's massive size and power, it suddenly becomes possible again. Back in the early days of NASA, the agency designed a giant rocket called Nova. This rocket was supposed to be even larger and stronger than the Saturn V. The whole point of Nova was to land astronauts on the moon without any refueling and without any docking in space. It would launch from Earth, go straight to the moon, land, and come back in one continuous mission. NASA eventually canceled Nova because they didn't have a big enough building to assemble it, and the Saturn V was already enough to their goal. But the core idea behind Nova is what makes this new Starship solution so interesting today. The big reason Nova could reach the moon without refueling was because it had three stages. That third stage made a huge difference. The first two stages did the heavy lifting. Then the third stage, which was much lighter, handled the final push into orbit and the burn toward the moon. This made the whole mission far simpler. Starship today only has two stages, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Upper Stage. That means the Starship Upper Stage is forced to do too many jobs at once. It has to reach orbit, carry all its landing hardware, carry crew or cargo, and then still have enough fuel left to go to the moon. That is why refueling is needed. But here's where things get interesting. Starship's payload bay is so big that it can actually fit a third stage inside it. Not a small cube or a tiny engine, but a full upper stage. In fact, Starship's cargo bay is large enough to carry something like a custom-built third stage that SpaceX could design themselves. This third stage would not need fancy new engines or new materials. 
It could be made from the same stainless steel tank SpaceX already mass produces, and it could use a single Raptor engine, which SpaceX already builds in large numbers. This means it would stay cheap and fast to develop. If SpaceX adds this third stage, something big happens. Starship would no longer need orbital refueling for certain missions. And the good thing is Starship isn't even in its final form yet. SpaceX is still upgrading and making it bigger with every new version, which means the idea of adding a third stage only gets more realistic as the vehicle evolves. The earliest full-stack Starship, what most people consider version 1, stood at about 120 meters tall, with a 69-meter booster and a 50-meter ship. It had heavier stainless steel walls, older plumbing, and early Raptor engines that produced around 180 to 230 tons of thrust. This version was mainly built to prove the basics like surviving max Q, which is the moment of maximum aerodynamic pressure on a rocket. Because it was so heavy and still experimental, its true payload capacity was far below the theoretical numbers SpaceX was aiming for. Version 2 kept the same exterior height, but internally it was a huge step forward. The tanks became lighter, and the general layout inside the ship was simplified. This version still used Raptor 2 engines in the same 230-ton thrust class, but they were far more reliable than the engines on version 1. Version 3 came with even more changes, and is the one people saw on Flight 3 and Flight 4. It still stood around 120 meters tall, but the mass was reduced again thanks to redesigned tank walls and better internal supports. The ship also had improved heat shield tile attachment and more efficient control systems. This is when SpaceX began shifting toward the Raptor 3 engine design, which produces more than 280 tons of thrust with a cleaner and more efficient build. Starship finally approached the 120 to 150 ton payload class that SpaceX originally targeted. Version 4 is now being built for future flights. The ship has stronger but thinner tank walls and more internal room for propellant. Even though the height remains roughly 120 meters, SpaceX has already confirmed that future Starships will be stretched to carry even more fuel, which will naturally increase performance. This is also the stage where Raptor 3 becomes the standard engine, and SpaceX is already moving toward Raptor 4, which is designed to be cheaper, simpler, and even more powerful. Raptor 4 is expected to push thrust beyond anything seen so far on Starship, allowing the rocket to carry heavier loads and burn longer before running out of propellant. When you look at this steady progression, you can see why the third stage idea works so well. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.